Hooray! Welcome to the 200th official episode of The Guy to Space. First off, thank you. Thank you for watching, liking, sharing, subscribing, and being a patron of our show. Yes, you. Thank you. Thank you. So, to celebrate, a few weeks ago, we invited the members of the Weekly Space Hangout crew Google Plus community to suggest topics for episodes, and the winner would receive a precious iron nickel meteorite. Oh my God, is that a real iron nickel meteorite? <laughs> so congratulations, Andres Munoz. This meteorite is for you. That this episode, cute. chosen by Andres, is for everyone. That's Jay. The search for life in the solar system is about the hunt for water. Wherever we find liquid water on Earth, we find life. I'm talking everywhere in the most briny, salty pools in Antarctica, in the hottest hot springs in Yellowstone, under glaciers, and kilometers deep underground. So we go searching for liquid water in the solar system. You might be surprised to learn that Jupiter's moon Europa has the most water in the entire solar system. If you took all the water on Earth and collected it into a big sphere, it would measure almost 1,400 kilometers across. Europa's water would measure nearly 1,800 kilometers across. All that water exists in a layer around Europa, encased in a layer of ice. How thick? We don't know. Is there life down there? We don't know. You could say there might be, and it wouldn't be untrue. However, if you say there isn't, that's way less interesting for clickbait purposes. So whenever we don't know the answers to fundamental and intriguing questions like that, it's time to send a mission. Well, good news. An actual mission to Europa is in the works right now. In 2015, NASA approved the development of an orbiter mission to Europa. And if all goes well and nothing gets canceled, and nothing will get canceled, right? Right? I heard Firefly. Which one of you said Firefly? Uh, according to the plan, a spacecraft will launch in the 2020s, carrying nine instruments to Europa. Most will be familiar cameras, mass spectrometers, and the like to study the surface of Europa at a high level of resolution. Over the course of 45 flybys, the spacecraft will get down as close as 25 kilometers and capture it with incredible resolution. Perhaps the most exciting and controversial instrument on board the new Europa Orbiter mission will be its ice-penetrating radar. Now, mission planners battled over installing a radar this sophisticated as it will be an enormous drain on the orbiter's power. But this, for us, is incredibly exciting because it will allow the spacecraft to map out the depth and thickness of Europa's icy exterior. Is it thick or thin? Are there pockets of water trapped just below the surface? Or is it a tough shell that goes on for dozens of kilometers? The worst case scenario is that the shell goes thicker than the radar can reach, and we still won't know how far it goes. Well, whatever happens, the Europa Orbiter will be a boon to science, answering outstanding questions about the moon and the chances of finding life there. We're just getting started. What we really want to send is a lander. Because of the intense radiation from Jupiter, the Sun, and space itself, the surface of the ice on Europa will be sterilized. But dig down a few centimeters and you might find life that's protected from the radiation. So a future Europa lander could be equipped with a heated drill attached to a tether. The lander would have a heat-generated radioisotope thermoelectric generator like most of NASA's big outer solar system spacecraft. But in addition to using it for electricity, it'll use the raw heat to help the tether drill to grind through the ice a few meters and sample what's down there. But drilling more than a few meters is probably the stuff of science fiction. I mean, Russian scientists in Antarctica drilled for almost two decades to get through 4,000 meters of ice above Lake Vostok. Imagine trying to get through 100 kilometers of the stuff on a distant world with a robot. But since I've talked about moving the sun and terraforming the moon, maybe I shouldn't put any bounds on my imagination. Nuclear-powered Europa submarines will get us swimming with the singing European space whales in no time. Europa is the best place to search the solar system for life, and I'm excited to see what the upcoming Europa Orbiter mission turns up. And I'm even more excited about the possibility of any future lander missions. 
So it was a lot of fun wrapping my brain around a topic chosen by the fans. What topic would you like us to cover next? I got a whole pocket of meteorites here. Put it in the comments below. We want to thank uh, everybody. It's been a crazy race getting up to 200 episodes, but mostly it has been a blast. Uh, periodically it's been uncomfortable and we throw tantrums at each other and fight about dumb and sad, petty things, but we've grown as people and are, are, we're closer now. And so uh, most importantly, none of that would have happened if it wasn't for your support. So, so thank you so much. And, uh, you know, from, from us and, and from the other people who help make the show so great, uh, thank you so much. And here's to, to 200 more. All right, well, thanks for watching. So never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. Our Patreon community is the reason these shows happen. And we'd like to thank Mike, Mike Mong Mongo, David Young, and the rest of the members who support us in making great space and astronomy content. Members get advanced access to episodes, extras, contests, and other shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team. So, want to get in the action? Click here. Click there. Right there. Hooray! Welcome to the 200th. Ah. Oh, how do you like this, huh? Yeah. It's so easy, isn't it, right? Just, just like, oh. Just gotta read those words. Just gotta read those words. Read the words, word read monkey. Uh.